David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Let us pray. Eternal and all wise God, we come to you as humble as we know how. We magnify you and exalt you because you are our God. You are the one who sits high but looks down low. You are the King of King and the Lord of Lords. You are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. You are Jehovah Shalom, our peace. You are Jehovah Rapha, our healer. And Lord, as we call on you right now, Lord, we need you to heal the land. For you, your word says that if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal the land. So Lord, in all humility, we ask that you renew a right spirit in us. Cleanse us and purge us with hyssop. For we believe, God, that just as you restored David, you can and will restore us. And Master, as we continue living during this season of the coronavirus, we ask that you continue to protect us from hurt, harm, and danger. Continue to wrap us in your arms of protection. Continue, God, to keep us as we travel the dangerous highways and byways. Continue to watch over us as we enter into and out of our home. Watch over us and keep us, O oh Lord. Bless the sick and the shut-in. Bless our medical professionals. Bless all hospital chaplains. Bless our morticians and funeral directors. Bless every man and woman of God standing and kneeling before the throne of grace and calling on you, God. Bless all of the families that are in bereavement right now. And Lord, send us your comforter because we know, Lord, if you comfort us, we will have a peace that surpasses all understanding. Father God, we trust you, we depend on you, and we need you to move right now. We thank you, God, we love you, and we bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shine on me, oh, shine on me. I wonder if the lighthouse Bye.
will shine on me, shine on me, oh, shine on me. I Eternal God, we come to this point in our worship, Lord, where we need to hear a word from you. So, Lord, we pray right now that you remove me out of the way. And, Lord, you come into my mind, my heart, my spirit. And, Lord, speak to your people right now. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you. For you are my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Our text today is coming from Paul's letter to the church at Philippi. Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 through 11. Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 through 11. Reading from the New International Version today. Beginning at verse 9, the Bible says, Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. From this passage of scripture, I want to talk about the magnitude of the name, the magnitude of the name. Magnitude is a descriptive noun that expresses the great size or extent of something. It shows the immensity, the vastness, the enormity of whatever it is that it's being used to describe. And on today, I want to talk about the magnitude of the name. I said the name and not a name because this is an extraordinary name. This name is unlike any other name. This name has a vastness unlike any other name. It commands reverence and respect unlike any other name. It has power unlike any other name. And I'm not talking about some kind of magical hocus pocus power. I'm talking about a spiritual power that transcends all other powers. It is a power that can open doors that have been shut. It is a power that can move mountains out of your way. It is a power that can Cause your darkness to become daylight and mend your broken heart. This power is activated by the name. Brothers and sisters, I have firsthand knowledge of the extent to which this name can make a way out of no way. Many years ago, I was working as the general manager of Alabama Georgia News Service, newspaper distribution company based out of Auburn, Alabama. We specialize in the distribution of high-end newspapers like the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, USA Today, and others. We had drivers that ran routes between Auburn and Atlanta and between Auburn and Mobile. But whenever we were short a driver, I ended up having to make their run. So one time I was on my way to Atlanta and I had to make a stop in Opelika. As I was driving along the interstate, I noticed that 
I was alone with no one visibly behind me. This was probably around 12 or one o'clock in the morning. But as I approached the exit, all of a sudden, a car came screaming by me as if it were going to attempt to exit before I could exit. It was so close to me that I probably could have reached out the window and touched the hood of the car. It really scared me and it shook me. And in that instant, I recognized that the car was about to hit me. I didn't have time to say a long drawn out prayer. I, I didn't have time to slow down or maneuver my vehicle out of that car's way. All I had time to do was call on the name. So I cried out, Jesus, and instantly, car went spinning in the opposite direction, crossed over the median and across the highway and ended up in a ditch on the other side of the interstate. By God's grace, there was nothing else on the road and he didn't hit anyone head on. It was as if someone had yanked the car on my behalf and prevented it from hitting me. You know, I grew up in the church. I was baptized at Canaan Baptist Church in Patterson, New Jersey. And by the time this event happened, I knew who Jesus is. And I was preaching even by this time. So I knew who God is. I knew who Jesus is. But it wasn't until that precise moment that I realized the magnitude of the name. It was the name that saved my life. First point I wanna to make today is that the name is exalted. The name is exalted. We must understand that this name has been translated through many languages. The name Jesus in English is derived from the Hebrew word Yehoshua meaning to deliver, save, or rescue. The name Yeshua is a shortened version of the name Yehoshua and is the literal Hebrew word for salvation. It is the Hebrew Yeshua that is translated into Greek as Aesus. When the Greek Aesu is transliterated into English, an initial I followed by a vowel is written as a J. And the digraph OU, which corresponds to the long U sound in English, is transliterated as U. Thus, Yehoshua becomes Yeshus or Aesus, and then Jesus. Of course, Jesus is properly pronounced Yeshus, but we pronounce it today with a heavy English accent. But let's not be deceived whether you're using the name Jesus or Yeshua, we are calling on the same person. For example, I grew up in a community that was a melting pot of many different cultures. We had a community that was rich in African American, Jamaican and Haitian cultures. We had a large Italian, Polish and European population. Further, we had a large Jewish, uh, Catholic, Muslim, and Protestant population in our city. Moreover, our community had Hispanics. And I'm not talking about just the Mexicans that we mostly see down here in the Deep South and on the West Coast. We had Colombians and Venezuelans. We had Puerto Ricans and Costa Ricans. We had Cubans and Dominicans. My Hispanic friends would sometimes refer to me as Tomasito. This was the trans Spanish translation of my name. It didn't change who I was. It didn't change who they were talking about. It was just another translation of my name. When we use the name Jesus, we are not just using the English translation or transliteration of his name, Yeshua. We are using a name that he recognizes. It doesn't change who he is. It doesn't diminish the power of his name. He knows who we are talking to. He knows who we are calling on. And God knows who we are talking about. 
In any language, it is a name that deserves honor and respect. It is not a pookie in them nickname. Junebug peaches and peanut can't compare to the name of Jesus. Those names have no power. It is not a name that should be given to just anybody. It is so revered in the United States that you rarely find somebody named Jesus. Although you might find a person of Hispanic descent named Jesus, which is spelled just like Jesus. Jesus is a name that should be exalted. In our text, Philippians chapter 2 verse 9 says, Therefore God exalted Jesus to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. So there is no other name that compares to his name. His name is in a class all by itself, and we are to honor it and even to bow down before it. Philippians 2.10 says that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. Not only should we bow down before the name, not only should we bow down before the man who the name belongs to, but we should bow down in honor and reverence of the name. This name is exalted. Second thing I want us to understand today is that the name is also unsuppressed. Unsuppressed in British English is an adjective, uh, which means not suppressed or smothered. It is not subdued or restrained. You can't silence the name. There was a situation in Acts chapter 4 where uh, Peter and John had been going around and they had been teaching and healing in the name of Jesus. And because they healed this one particular person on the Sabbath, they were called before the council. And the council, understanding that they had to be uh, careful in how they treated Peter and John because the people were behind them. Uh, they decided that instead of killing them or rebuking them or doing anything else, um, that they would tell them to do something that I think most of us brothers and sisters would find ungodly if someone were to tell us that today. In Acts chapter 4 verse 18 it says, And they called them in again and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, which is right in God's eyes, to listen to you or to him, you be the judges. See, the thing is, you can't stop the name from working. This past week, our area was hit by severe storms that produced tornadoes in some parts of our state. We were blessed, however, not to get hit by a tornado. However, around 12 o'clock midnight on Monday morning, a power went out and it didn't come back on until 8.30 p.m. Monday night. Now, the power stopped working over 20 hours. The appliances in the house couldn't work because of the power outage. We couldn't charge our phone, our iPads, or our computers because the power had stopped working. So anything that required power that came from Alabama power was also without power. But I'm glad to let you know, brothers and sisters, that the name of Jesus is never without power. You can call on that name in the midnight hour and the power is still working. It never stops working for you and for me. It never leaves us nor forsakes us. It is from everlasting to everlasting. It is a power that never, ever stops working. You can't quench the name's impact. And like many times, people I've learned will name drop to try to impress you. They will name drop someone they know whose name carries some kind of weight in whatever they're doing at that moment. 
person going for a job interview may name drop someone who works in the company thinking they might receive favor on that person's behalf. Person on a date might name drop a celebrity trying to impress whoever they're trying to date. People trying to gain interest into an exclusive country club or nightclub might name drop a manager or an employee thinking they might gain access into the club. But in all of these cases, if the person that you're name dropping to doesn't know the name that you're dropping on them, then the ability of the name has been quenched. But I'm glad that the name like uh, name of Jesus is unlike any other name. It transcends any barrier or division. People of all religions know the name. People of all nationalities know the name. People of all ethnicities know the name. People of all sexual orientations know the name. People of all political affiliations know the name. Sinners and saints alike know the name. And anybody who is in trouble can call on that name. It is a name that is worthy to be praised. And if you won't praise it, the Bible tells me that the rocks will cry out on behalf of that name. The name cannot be suppressed. Finally, my brothers and sisters, the name also has power. It has the power to activate your ability to walk. In Acts chapter 3, the apostles Peter and John were on their way to pray at the temple. They encountered a man who had been lame and he was laying down and begging at the temple gate. In Acts chapter 3 verse 6, the Bible says, Peter told the man, silver and gold have I none, but what I have I give to you. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. So the Bible says that Peter took this man by the hand. He helped him up and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and he began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. Because of the name, this man's walk with Christ was jump-started. And this same name can jumpstart your walk with God. Stop talking about you have to wait to get yourself right before you come back to church. Just come on back to church and let God get you right. Come back to church where you can be among the saints who can encourage you and help you get back on the path of righteousness. Just call on the name and rise up and walk. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Brothers and sisters, the name has power to remove demons out of your way. The Bible talks about a time when Paul was preaching and he had gone around healing. And he came to this one place where there were many vendors. And the Bible says this woman kept following him around and telling him that he was sent from God kept crying out. Brothers and sisters said that Paul finally got tired of it and he turned around and he spoke to the woman. He said, in the name of Jesus, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the spirit left her. That lets me know, brothers and sisters, that you can speak to demons in the name of Jesus and demons will have to get out of your house. You can speak to demons and they will have to leave your children alone. It has the power, this name, to initiate the provision of everything that you need. The name is better than an 800 credit score. which you've been denied because of your credit score, you can have in the name of Jesus. John 16, 23 says, in that day you will no longer ask me anything. Very truly I tell you, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. You can ask for health in the name of Jesus and God will provide it. 
You can ask for wealth and God will provide it. You can ask for prosperity and God will provide it. You can ask for victory and God will provide it. You can ask for a help me and God will provide him or her to you. Jesus said, whatever you ask in my name, God would give it to you. But with asking comes great responsibility. You have to ask believing that God will answer. Not only that, but you have to ask humbly and without greed on your mind. You have to ask for the purpose of doing good and not evil. You have to ask so that you can be a blessing and not a curse. You have to ask so that God can be glorified and the name of Jesus can be magnified. You have to ask so you can help somebody and not harm somebody. Whatever it is, you have to ask in the name that is above every other name. You have to ask in the name for which every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Yes, every knee shall bow. Young knees shall bow. Old knees shall bow. White knees shall bow. Brown knees shall bow. Yellow knees shall bow. Black knees shall bow. Knobby knees shall bow. Wounded knees shall bow. Rich knees shall bow. Poor knees shall bow. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Why is he Lord? Because he came down through 42 generations into a sin sick and dying world. He made himself a living sacrifice and shed his blood that by his stripes we are healed. He died on a sacrificial cross on a Friday. But early on a Sunday morning, he arose with all power in his hand. That's why we can ask for whatever we need in his name. God said he shall supply all of our needs according to his riches in glory. And if we delight ourselves in him, I believe he'll supply the desires of our heart. If we find joy in him if we worship and praise him, we can have access to all of this, not because of anything that we have done, but because of grace and mercy and the magnitude of the name. May God bless you and may God forever keep you. Tonight, we commemorate his time on the cross where he died and gave his life for us. But see, some of us ought to know that even in these times of trouble, you can look out and you can find that there's still a living down in the valley. Have I got a witness in here? Oh, there's a living. He's in the valley, coming to be bright. Come on and help us sing it tonight. Oh,
It's in 